my face and very aggressively he said, Madam, is Kashmir an integral part of India or not? Is Kashmir an integral part of India or not? About five times. So I said, look, Kashmir has never been an integral part of India. <laughs> however, however aggressively and however often you want to ask me that, even the Indian government has accepted in the UN that it's not an integral part of India. So why are we trying to change that narrative now? See, I think this disturbance is based on a misunderstanding because I was beginning to talk about justice and in that, in that conversation about justice, I was just about to say that what happened with the Kashmiri Pandits is a tragedy. So I don't, I don't know why you all started shouting. I think it's a tragedy because when we stand here and talk about justice, it is justice for everybody. You know, it is justice for everybody. And, and those of us, those of us who stand here and talk about there being a place for everybody, whether there is a minority, whether it's an ethnic minority or a religious minority or minority in terms of caste, we do not believe in majoritarianism. So that is why I was talking about the fact that everybody in Kashmir should, should have a very deep discussion about what kind of society you're fighting for, because Kashmir is a very diverse community. And that discussion does not have to come from critics or people who are against Azadi trying to divide the struggle. It has to come from within you. So it is not, in, not the place of people outside to say, you know, they don't know what they mean by Azadi. Do they mean uh, Gilgit and Baltistan? What about Jammu? What about Ladakh? These are debates that people within the state of Jammu and Kashmir are quite capable of having by themselves. And I think they understand that. So, so you know, the, to, to, just, to just try and derail things, by shouting at people is completely pointless. Because I think, I think that people, the, the pundits in Kashmir, all the time I've spent in Kashmir, I have only heard people say they are welcome back. You know, and I know people who live there who, who, who believe that too. Yet, so, so. You know which one, man? We'll take it. Just cut it. So, come on. You tell us which mic you want. Don't push. Don't push. Have manners. So, uh, so all I want to say, all I want to say is that when we, when we are having these political debates, I feel. I have watched and been listening to and following the recent uprising in Kashmir. The fact that unarmed people, young people armed with stones, women, even children are out on the streets facing down, facing down this massive army with guns is something that nobody in the world cannot help but salute. <laughs> however, however, it is up, it is up to the people who are leading this struggle. It is up to the people who are thinking 
to, to take it further, you see, because you cannot just, um, you, you cannot just leave it there. Because the Indian state, you know what its greatest art is? It's not killing people. That's its second greatest art. The first greatest art is to wait. To wait and wait and wait and, and hope that everybody's energies will just go down. Crisis management, sometimes it's an election, sometimes it's something else. But the point is that people have to look at more than a direct confrontation on the streets. You have to ask yourselves why. The people of Nagaland must ask themselves why there's a Naga battalion committing the most unbelievable atrocities in Chhattisgarh. After spending so much time in Kashmir watching the CRPF and the BSF and the uh, Rashtra Rifles, you know, lock down that valley. The first time I went to Chhattisgarh on the way, I saw uh, Kashmiri BSF, Kashmiri CRPF on the way to kill people in Chhattisgarh. You know, so you got to ask yourself, there are, there are, there's more to resistance than throwing stones. You know, these things cannot be allowed to happen. How is the state using people? The, the colonial state, whether, whether it was the British state in India, or whether it's the Indian state in Kashmir or Nagaland, or uh, in Chhattisgarh, they are in the business of creating elites to manage their occupations. So you have to know your enemy. And you have to be able to respond in ways where you're tactical, where you're intelligent, where you're political, internationally, locally, and in every other way. You have to make your alliances. It, because otherwise, you will be like fish swimming furiously uh, around a fish tank, bombing the walls, and getting tired in the end, because those walls are very, very strong. So, so I, I just leave you with this. Think about justice, and don't pick and choose your injustices. Don't say that I want justice, but it's OK if the next guy doesn't have it, or the next woman doesn't have it. Because justice is, is, is the keystone to integrity. And, the, and the integrity is the keystone to real resistance. Thank you.